Hey, this is working. So, all right, everybody, welcome to episode 10 of Strategy Snacks. Super excited. Um, it took a while to get here, like a year to get here, um, but I'm glad that I finally found this pace um, and this kind of like routine that's kind of working for me. Um, not everybody makes it to episode 10, and there's a lot of statistics that say there's like almost like a 70, 80% drop off rate per podcast to get into episode 10. So thank you for that. So welcome to Strategy Snacks. This is where we bridge the gap between brand and the user experience. I'm super glad um, to be doing this. So I um, love talking. I love helping other people out. Um, and thank you guys. If you're still listening, if you're everybody that's checking in the podcast uh, for the first time, thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, for those that have been subscribed for a little bit of time or are just catching up with me, um, welcome. So I'm just super glad to be uh, be doing this. So thank you guys. So um, update on myself. I am working on a couple side projects myself. Um, so working on a couple design systems and that has been really, really, really fun. Um, been doing a lot of like building out components, um, how they work together, how they integrate uh, well, and using new technology in order to do so. Um, let me move a little bit closer so that you guys can hear me. Um, so building new components out, um, uh, creating like design systems. I mean, it's it's similar in the sense where um, I used to create like brand style guides and stuff of that nature, and it's just a bit more in depth and complex for this in, in a different direction. It's not necessarily about feel and approach like that's that's still there, but it's more about the uh, the technical portions of an interface. Pardon me. So how uh, these switches and sliders and uh, buttons and um, how these things operate and work not on mobile and in web and, and that's been pretty fun um, So I'm, I'm really excited to be working on these new design systems um, So yes uh, I'm really excited because of XD and Figma updates coming out and we're gonna talk about that shortly um, XD and Figma have some amazing amazing like extremely amazing updates um, So if you do not know what Adobe XD is it's Adobe uh, experience design that's like the pink pinkish app um it's similar to illustrator um you can't necessarily photoshop people in the, in the program that's not what it's made for necessarily um but it works similar to figma uh in that sense but they have different uh tools different skill sets different ways of approaching problems and however you decide to think as a designer a ui designer ux designer um creating interactions or prototypes right uh, however you decide, however you think, um, just tackle any of the programs and then try them out. They, they work similarly, um, but as you get a handle of them and uh, you start getting used to them, um, you know, you might fall in love with one or the other. I, I started off falling in love with Figma and after Adobe Max, um, I like Adobe XD. And that's that's a little odd for me to say because um, it's seeing those updates and seeing what's possible and what you can do. Uh, and speeding up the process for your workflow is it's exciting. So Adobe, again, if you guys are watching this, this is not a free, uh, <laughs> free little tip. If you guys want to shout me out, feel free and go ahead. Um, so, yeah, so recently, these past three days, I was waiting to release this episode um, and talk on this because I wanted Adobe Max to finish. So thank goodness. Um, well, not really thank goodness, but it was free this year. It's typically an expensive kind of like three day, like all day global, like kind of presentation, right? Like a, like a huge keynote, like three day kind of like sessions of multiple programs and giving like um, professional tips and advice from people out in the field. And um, a lot of known names uh, were talking and being presented. Um, so if you guys don't know what that is, feel free to check out Adobe Max. I've been tweeting that on my social media accounts. Um, if you don't follow me, follow me on Sean underscore Marcano or follow the podcast at Strat Snacks Pod on Twitter um, to continue some of this conversation. But um, 
Adobe Max is an, an amazing, amazing presentation. It's kind of my, it's one of my first ones. I heard a lot about them before, like people presenting them and talking about it and tweeting about it, but I just could never like, you know, afford to go there. Um, and I'm just really glad that it was like free this year. Um, the reason why it was free is because of COVID, obviously, uh, people can't like congregate and be near each other. And, you know, given that kind of like global situation, it was a really, really amazing event. Um, let's jump right into it. So um, I want to, before actually, before we jump into that, I want to give a shout out to uh, Where Are the Black Designers? It is a community um, I joined recently via Slack. And I don't know if I spoke about this in the previous pot, previous episode, but I'm really excited. I'm really glad that I'm part of this uh, community. Like we're watching the the episode uh, of the Adobe Max sessions, um, kind of like all day. Let me drink some of this. Oh my god, thirsty as hell. Um. So we were watching the we were watching the the sessions like as a family and discussing it, and it's like really really fun. I think I kind of like found my community to to be a part of and um as far as like design goes and, and that's kind of really really important um find your place right like we're gonna we're gonna touch base on that a little bit but find your kind of like tribe finally find where you can uh provide value and, and provide input um and it was like really really fun watching with them and joking around and things of that nature so adobe max did something really really dope this year Give a big, big highlight to hip hop in New York City, and I'm 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 a hip hop head. Like I love music, um, so those who do know me, they they do know that. But if you don't know, I love rap, I love hip hop, I love R and B, um, and they gave like a long session uh, to like rock him and him rapping, and they close out, they open up the show with him, and they close out the show with him. <coughs> so that was really really cool to see. Um, and showed a lot, a lot of love. Um, and it made sense, right? Like, hip-hop is sort of this epitome of, like, art. It's, a, it's an expressive, it's a huge artistic expression. They were showing statistics. I didn't take note um, of it, but... Um, oh, actually, it's a, it's a tweet that I saw. And how rap artists uh, use vocabulary and how they out speak or outword other genres of music astronomically like they the words that are used in rap use about like six thousand words in comparison or six thousand unique words in comparison to like country and rock and so on and so forth where they use might be a little less about like three thousand in this genre two thousand this genre um but rap uses an, such an extensive vocabulary such a expressive form of art pardon me such an expressive form of art um intellect knowledge like Everything that you could possibly think of, like politics, everything, right? Um, so I was really, really glad that Adobe used this platform to kind of highlight that. Um, so I'm really, that, that was great. Like, I'm, I'm really happy about that. Um, paid homage to New York. I'm from New York. Uh, so if you're from New York, you know, you, you, you've seen the views. Uh, um, so they had him outside. And I think it might have been pre-recorded in Sydney Mass, but uh, they had him outside, I think, near, like, the Brooklyn Bridge area. Um, kind of see Manhattan in the background and he was like rapping and it was just a really it was a really good sight and he's still as lyrical and talented as ever, as ever pardon me so um another thing that, that I'd also noticed in this event and a couple other like platforms and keynotes have done this but what Adobe was doing was really great they, they made sure to speak on this topic and subject continuously throughout the main live uh, event, like the main live, well, everything was live, right? But the, the main live stage, you could say, and then the other sessions that were going on at the same time um, throughout. So it was like talking about diversity and inclusion and um, like Black Lives Matter. And it was just, it was just great to see like nothing. It didn't seem too forced. It was done kind of genuinely. There's a, there was a lot of highlight of like black creatives and black creators and uh, people of color they were um i'm dominican myself like they had a dominican artist there uh might have i don't remember if he was a photographer no he was he was a creator nevertheless might have been a photographer um people from the middle east like it, it was just a, a, everywhere like 
it just had so much diversity and color on stage. And it was just from a place like Adobe, um, it was just beautiful to see. And, and I'm, I was really happy about that. Um, let's see. Um, hmm. Yeah, so they made sure to keep that in mind. Like it was at the forefront. At all. It was a part of the conversation through and through from talking about Photoshop and talking about the business of design to talking about how uh, we can be more collaborative as a team. Like they made sure there was a lot of sessions on inclusion and making people feel apart um, and, and being like, spe like the, the things that are created with Adobe are often seen and it could make sense, right? Like what these creative tools create, whether it be audio, visual, um, physical, right? Like all these things people see, people consume, people use, people feel, people touch. Um, and it impacts the world globally, like throughout every single realm we could possibly think of. Um, and these tools create these things, like obviously through the, the, the hard work of artists and their own creative expression. Um, but the fact that these tools have that impact, it's like it's like one feeds the other, right? Like one helps the other one. So that was really cool to see. I, I, I like being part of like that conversation. And that was really interesting. So um, there's new possibilities. I'm getting more, more technical with this. So this is for the designers and the creatives. And if you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner and this is not necessarily like your jam, they'll like pay attention to this because um, these are interesting things to know about. Um, like some of the technicalities of some of the programs, like designing user experiences, um, designing interfaces and, and what's possible with some of these tools with what they're coming out with, because they can have a significant impact on your business um, now or in the long run. Like the update is out now and what you can create now for your site, the new ideas you can have. Um, it's up to you, like it's up to your imagination and what you feel you can create. So. This is why I kind of fell in love with Adobe XD. <laughs> Adobe XD came out with some new updates and I, I, I love Figma. Like that's my go to. I love the collaboration. I love how easy it is to collaborate with other people. You know, people can see your mouse and a simple link and share and you can have like a bunch of teams set up really, really great. And there's a big focus on like education. They've only been around for a couple of years or, or a little less. Um, and seeing the, the, the amount of change that they have made to now is fantastic, right? But why I fell in love with Adobe XD this past Adobe Max? One, the implementation and use of 3D. So typically when you're working with um, any kind of these like, pardon me. So typically when you're working with any kind of uh, of these platforms, you can just do like 2D, right? Like 2D work with the, with the use of some with the use of some extensions or pl pr uh, plugins. You can kind of like adjust kind of like the angle of things, but now built into the tool, there's a 3D gizmo. So what a 3D gizmo is, think about like a little circle with several arrows. Um, and for those that are listening, uh, follow with me. And for those that are on YouTube. Um, you can see me. <laughs> so the a 3D gizmo is a uh, thing like a basketball, right? So those that the lines on the basketball, you're able to rotate along the lines of that basketball. So from X to Y axes, right? If you think about like math class, geometry or whatever trigonometry uh, from the, oh, the from the X axes, the Y axes and the Z. So some say Z, Z is like the depth. So from say you're sitting down at a table from you to the wall. Right. Or, you know, from you to the front of your dashboard of your car. Right. Like that's the Z axis, kind of like in, if you think about it in that sense. Um, so with this 3D gizmo, you're able to rotate and tilt the angle of this two dimensional space. So the reason why this unlocks such an amazing potential is because what is now possible with you creating interfaces that are, are now 3D? Um, say and, and there oh there has been kind of like the pseudo 3d kind of effect that has been done before um with other platforms and programs but now because it's built in it's a bit more accessible um 
And from what I've seen, some of these like uh, professionals in the in the field, uh, there was an artist. Uh, at my my top of my head, I do not remember his name. He's in, I believe, he's Japanese. He was presenting one of the sessions. He posted up a tweet. I, I think I shared it on my Twitter, um, so you can check it on my timeline at Sean underscore Marcano. Um, but he created like this like three D like rings kind of spinning and rotating. And mind you, this is in two D. It's a vector. So for those that again first time joining us or not necessarily a designer, um, for the obviously the professionals, you know what a vector is. But for those that are just joining, vector is basically how you create or the a shape um, or shapes that are created by points and math and math, and math right? So that's kind of just the scientific thought about it, if for layman's terms. But there, these rings are like vector, and you can resize them and shape them, and they don't lose kind of any kind of value, uh, any kind of like um, resolution because you can scale them and reduce them because they're mathematic. They're they're, they're math. They're made from math, like different points, vector points. And um, I'm just like re really excited. Like I'm nerding out about it. So like, don't judge me, but it's really, really exciting to see. And I'm super, I can't wait to dive in to like play around with some of these tools. Another thing too, I didn't even jump to like number two. Number two, um, I got to learn about some of the new like co-editing features that they have which they might have done it, they might have had it before, but um, I learned about it in this Adobe Max uh, presentation, which is really, really cool to see. Um, so kudos to Adobe, that was really cool. The other thing, this is number three, is um, I began to learn how to use different plugins um, to automate certain processes of my user experience design um, process, right? So one tip I learned from a lady named Rebecca, um, I can put her at in the show notes below. Really, really great presentation. She was really cool, um, responded to me on Twitter. I uh, was giving like her like big shout outs for like learning this like step. But what you're able to do is um, using a Google Sheet or some sort of link or a CSV file from like you create this in Excel. Um, when you collect this data and this information from your UX research or from say marketing or at whoever you get this data from, you're able to now bring that in using Google Sheets, right? You might have done, been able to do this before, but again, my first time learning this, so I want to share my story. Um, you're able to bring in this data via Google Sheets and then implement that data into say a, another tool called Whiteboard. And this, this plugin or extension or plugin for the, I think Adobe XD, this plugin. Um, with Whiteboard, you're able to create a bunch of different like template, templatized um, type of like UX design um, tools, like creating like boards and sticky notes and stuff of that nature. And so you can create a huge board of sticky notes that all are the same using the auto grid feature or the auto grid um, button in the top right. And you can create this grid and now you uh, un ungrid them or take them off the grid and now you have a bunch of them and now you select all of the sticky notes and now you can automatically input that data from say one of the columns and automatically fill them out into all of the sticky notes um, by using this, white, this Google Sheets uh, plugin. So for those that do not know, if you're interested in learning more about this, feel free to check out the Adobe Max presentation. The sessions are up. Look for a name, Rebecca, and she's a, she's presenting about Adobe XD. There's a dope thing, a uh, dope presentation about that. Should be up for the next couple of days. Uh, if not, reach out to me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, um, my website, email. I'd, I would not mind to hop on a, a Zoom call or any kind of conversation to help you guys out and learn. Not even, you know, if it's for me helping you out or from learning from you guys, um, feel free to reach out because I, I would love to be part of that conversation. But that automates this process of writing down your data and information on these sticky boards and sticky notes uh, onto your whiteboards so that you can collaborate with your team much faster. Um, and that's really that, that's really the name of the game here, right? Like speed, time is money, right? Like if you're able to produce faster, um, uh, it can, you know, save money down the line and obviously re UX research and UX design costs a lot. There's a lot of value there. We're going to talk about that shortly. 
Now, I believe I'm on I'm a number four for why I fell in love with Adobe XD. Um, from what I was seeing, it seems to be that Adobe XD is really focusing on this like prototyping situation, right? Like I think I believe they had I believe they had something similar to um well they had the states, right? Um it's Figma who had the update. I believe I'm talking about Figma. Uh they recently had their their new updates gonna have like a uh, variance and stuff of like that. But uh Adobe XD has like these states and like again my first time learning about this I don't use Adobe XD all the time. Um, I predominantly use Figma, Sketch, uh, but Adobe XD has like these states and oh man, I saw, I can go on and on and on, but this is some of the reasons why I've, I've kind of like fallen in love with Adobe XD. Um, but I don't want to give Adobe XD all of the love. Figma has a new update coming out as well. And I'm really kind of upset right now because uh, I want to use the Figma update for my current projects that I'm working on. Um, but they're coming out in November. I don't know when November. I don't know. I don't necessarily know the date. I've been seeing them tease kind of some of the updates on social media. Again, if you're an entrepreneur or business owner, just sit tight, like pay attention to some of this information or try to take note about this. If you're going to redo your website or you want an application created or designed, right? Like this is where that kind of is rooted from and stems from and some of these conversations. So Pay attention to what the things the some of the things that I'm saying and speaking about so that when you do speak to somebody that can do these things, um, then you're able to converse a little bit differently by learning the language and, and being able to talk about some of these things. But say Figma, right? Uh, again, these are just prototyping tools, so it's not necessarily final deliverables, but they're prototyping uh, in order for you to develop them. But Figma has a new update coming out. And I'm I'm in love with what they're doing. Like the the presentation that they had, they had a keynote not too long ago. <clears throat> um, and you're able to highlight and select every single button and just create one button for all of your states and then create different various different properties for that button. So say you have a green and a white button, right? Just on the side of the UI, you can just switch color or icon. And they, that can be a switch. So you can enable your icon um, instead of having to scroll through your assets uh, panel for like, OK, which is the button with the but which is the button with the icon or which is the button with the two icons, but it's green or I need this one with the, the blue outline, right? Like it it is going to help automate some of this process. The next thing why I'm really, 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 really ex extremely looking forward to this next update from Figma is because they have this new um, prototyping tool in which instead of you creating 50, 60 different boards just to uh, prototype, just a simple couple switches or menu options, right? <clears throat> They're now going to allow you to create one component and just the prototyping for that one component. And then it implements wherever that component is at. So say you have a switch on your on your mobile design right like using one of the switches where you can slide off and on like the, if for those that do not know in your settings option in your iphone there's that little uh oval pill looking thing with a circle in it and you tap it and it goes to the left and you tap it, it goes to the right that's a switch um so now one of the the things they presented on was you create all the animations for it so when you tap the switch it goes to this state when you tap the switch from that state it goes back to this state and so on and so forth um, and what you can do is you make that one animation and it applies to everywhere else that that animation is at on that page. And that is amazing. That'll save so much time. And because you're able to do these things from what they're stating is that you'll be able to operate and conserve memory by up to 2000%. If you're saving memory up to 2000%, I think it might've been up to or like 2000%. I think that you got to say up to, right? Because it's like legal legalities and stuff like that, right? But I think up to like 2000% is what they were claiming that you can save on your memory. But if you can do that, it just helps speed up the process, right? Like speed is the name of the game. And it doesn't mean to sacrifice any kind of quality. Um, speaking about quality, Brian Collins, 
again, an amazing uh, CEO, CDO, creative director, right? Um, again, did an amazing uh, presentation on Twitch's rebrand in Adobe Max. So if you're interested in that, I, I stream myself um, and I use Twitch for several, several years and seeing their transition in their brand has been really amazing. It's been really great. Um, so if you're interested in that, check out Brian Collins, his presentation alongside another, it's another designer he's with, um, and they're discussing how Twitch's rebrand happened and kind of like where that stemmed from and the story of which, uh, that stemmed from as well. Check that out. Or we can talk about it actually later in a bit, but with this Figma update, um, you're able to then create, uh, prototypes way faster, saving time and time is the name of the game, right? Almost forgot where I was at. Um, so possibilities for the future and what this means, right? If we're if designers or a team of designers is able to prototype and design applications way faster, they can adapt to the speed in which um, things uh, new technologies come out, such as like 5G and what that can mean for UI design, right? Like once one technology comes or arrives into the scene, it affects and influences every other uh, part of technology in some form or fashion, right? Like everything affects something else, right? If I do something to some person, because I did that to that one person, it's gonna impact the way they affect another person, right? Like everything has its own, um, was it return, diminishing return, or like everything has its own reaction. Um, so what does it mean for the future? Speed. Again, speed is the name of the game. I'm going to continue iterating this. If you can iterate quickly, you can come up with a lot of create, creative solutions, and that's what matters the most. Um, now, huh. okay, the next thing is, I thought I, was, I thought I wasn't recording my audio, and I would have been really, really mad, really upset. Um, so about 3D, Adobe Dimensions, it's been a program they had been pushing out for some time, but they, they, they were doing a lot of sessions on this. And Adobe Dimensions is going to be Adobe's 3D tool. Um, I don't know how long it's been out. I, I haven't really used it as much. I, I stopped using a lot of 3D programs outside of like Maya, Cinema 4D, Blender. Um, but I want to dive into Adobe Dimensions because the possibilities that it has with integrating to Photoshop or to XD and creating 3D assets and imagery. Um, from what I've seen, one of the sessions, they were basically putting a 3D model of a headphone into a picture and adjusting the light and rendering it real time without much delay. And it would adapt to the lighting of the scene. So if I put, uh, if you're on YouTube, Check out YouTube so you can understand what I'm saying. But I have this um, soda can here, right? I want to show the brand. But if I have this soda can here, right? And because I have purple lights coming in here, let's say it's a 3D model of a soda can, right? Because obviously it's real life. But I have a 3D model of a soda can. And if I put it inside this room where I have this purple light coming from here, I have a white light coming from my right side. Um, now, when I put it into this scene, I can, there's like a button you press or something like that. From what I was looking in the session and you can then adjust some of the lights you can put in your own lights and then you, you like render it and it'll begin to adapt to the scene of the light. So what he did was he put a pair of headphones on like a studio table. He had a blue light coming from the back or back right. Uh, he had an orange light coming from the front left, I believe, and it had changed the colors of something so, so dynamic of a shape, right, of a pair of headphones. It began to color the interior part of the top, like the, the part you put it, you rest on your head. And it changed the color of that, the headphones there in orange. It changed the side of the headphones in blue. It added the orange to some portions and, and crevices of the 3D model. And that is just such a powerful tool. And it's just a matter of pressing several buttons to get that right. Obviously, it takes some skill to create some of the 3D models and some of that stuff, right? There's some skill set there that has to be applied. But the possibilities are endless in what you can do. If you are selling any kind of product and you want to put it into some sort of scene um, and you want to, you know, find, create this 3D model in on, on your on your computer or so on and so forth, 
and you and you have this, you can put it into a scene, some sort of picture in Paris, and it'll adapt to that scene um, with some of like the this this feature that they have in Adobe Dimension. So if you are a creator, if you're a designer, if you're an entrepreneur, 3D modeler, photographer, check this out. Uh, I don't know why my computer went. OK, there we go. Um, if you are, check that out um, and give it a try. Again, the possibility is endless and it's the name of the game is speed. So make sure you you apply this. Um, so another big thing I started to notice was there was a big focus on the iPad. Uh, what does that mean? So from what it seems like, it's that there's a bunch of applications being pushed from Adobe onto the iPad. So there's Illustrator and iPad, I believe, if I'm mistaken. Let's check that out. Let me just confirm. Um, iPad Adobe apps. So they have, okay. So Adobe has the iPhone app. So they're, they're pushing uh, Adobe Reader, uh, Photoshop Express. Um, they're pushing another type of Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom. Um, Adobe Illustrator Draw, which they seem to revamp on the iPad as well, and uh, I believe on mobile. I'm personally not a fan, I just can't get into it, but um, Adobe Fill In Sign, which they spoke about a lot, how you can automate some of this, like signing out paperwork and doing some of this accounting kind of stuff um, with their Adobe Sign tool uh, and setting out contracts and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, so what else? Uh, Adobe Spark Video, Adobe Spark Page, Adobe Scan, Adobe Capture, Adobe Premiere Clip, Adobe Spark Posts. Um, yeah, they, they, they have so many different apps um, that they're using and that they're creating and pushing for mobile. And I'm just kind of excited, a little nervous for the, for the laptops. There's still a place there, I think, for them. But the more powerful that these tools get, these mobile computers that we have, these mobile phones, iPads and, and such, these tablets, the more powerful they get, I'm a little nervous to see where the laptop goes. Um, will they still be here? Will there be another iteration? Will there be a some sort of like, I, honestly, I don't know. I, I really don't know what, what's the plan for laptops. Um, if I can get the same kind of result and work, maybe quicker, if not faster than I would on a laptop because of the ability to be able to draw and use my hand on a, a touch screen device, right? As these monitors and screens get more sophisticated, um, what's capable of them and how they adapt to pressure um, and so on and so forth, like those possibilities are kind of endless now too, right? So I'm a little nervous to see where the, where the laptop goes. There might be, still be a space for people that need to type and I mean, for the as far as the creators go. Um, so, this is sort of like leaning into some of the clothes. So um, advice for my entrepreneurs. Because this and these times are a little rough, uh, not a little, but really, really, really rough. Um, there's so much going on with the world and I want to like bring light to that. Uh, if, if you're dealing or facing with any kind of um, issues, if you have family members that are dealing with any kind of issues, um, feel free to reach out. Uh, uh, open to listen and to talk and 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 uh, hear you out. Um, I just know every people need each other more now than ever, um, and so that's really really important. So if you know somebody, be there for them, speak to them, reach out, just you know check in. How are you doing? Like how's everything? Um, it's I don't want to get too much into politics and to right. There's not the channel for that, but be there for one another. All right. Um, again, so my advice for entrepreneurs, this is really big. Uh, again, how are you fostering diversity and inclusion in your workspace? If you're starting up a business, if you have a business already, if you are a startup, if you're an entrepreneur, right? What are you doing to foster some of these talents? Uh, not talents. Well, they are talents or skill sets. Um, and in a UX design way, um, you having you being a diverse person, that is your superpower. I believe I spoke about that in the previous episode, um, like approach these design thinking, these design problems uh, with your superpower, right? Like nobody has the story that you have uh, and where you come from. That's what you have. And that's your story. I know it sounds redundant, but take advantage of that because that's your story. But yeah, entrepreneurs, how are you taking advantage um, and how are you fostering these good habits 
uh, for diversity and inclusion in your workspace, right? Are you providing opportunities for people that are not just like you, right? Um, diversity and inclusion means more than just skin color. It's like, are you, you know, for LGBTQA, I think that's the last letter, um, pardon me, um, but uh, are you fostering opportunities for everybody, right? Like, you know, um, everybody has skill sets beyond how they look, you know, um, and so you providing a space for people to be themselves, to tell their story through their work, through their creativity, through their um, you know, business practices, right? Like, what are you doing to foster some of these tendencies in your business, right? Like, what are you doing to help people out? Um, if you have a platform already built, are you helping other people uplift other people so they can speak up? Um, are you helping other people talk about where they come from and the things that they're dealing with in their community? Um, if you have a platform, are you being a voice for them? Uh, are you helping uplift people that need that voice lifted? Um, shout out to my women, women of color, like the world wouldn't be here without you. So, um, again, especially as a designer, it's important that we, uh, and, and a creator and a creative and a person in general, it's important that we, um, use the skill sets that we have so that we can then help other people, uh, in ways that can benefit them and, and benefit all of us in general. Um, everyone brings value, and that's something I really wanted to touch base on is everybody has a skill set, everybody has a superpower, um, minus the hateful people in the world, but everybody brings value and and so uh, like really, really harness these things. Um, some people have value in places you might not even know, like you know, like somebody might know how to create sneakers from Twizzlers. Like I honestly I don't know, but like <laughs> what everybody has something right um and the the goal is if you are somebody that's employing other people you need to be able to harness these things foster them grow them water them uh, and allow people to to grow in these spaces um that you provide and and that they feel safe to be able to do so um so that's that's one of the my little my little notes here um speaking about brian collins um, I wanted to discuss this a bit earlier is that people assume good user experience is it if it's a designed well Back to my all my episodes. I'm always gonna bring this point up Make sure you're speaking to the people that you serve. Make sure you're talking to people make sure you're Learning from them every step of the way Right if you made a slight change to one page of your site or one page of your app or you change your business cards or your posters, right? Get people's feedback, right? Are people, you, you could be saving yourself money or re, be able to adjust how you use your finances um, by asking people what they think about these deliverables, these things that you've created, the thing that your services that you offer, uh, the products, the products that you offer, right? Um, these are very, very important. And so um, take that into consideration. Um, yeah, I don't know how I got from there to there, but it makes sense in my head. Uh, so questions for UX designers. Um, how do you measure the value of UX? So that's a question for you guys. Um, how, if you're a UX designer out there or you're a creator out there, um, feel free to respond, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, review, um, write it, write my Twitter, Pod or Sean underscore Marcano. And reach out to me and I would like to know, how do you measure the value of UX? Um, I think that would be pretty interesting and I want to start a conversation there. Or if you're on YouTube, write it down in the comments. I would appreciate that. Make sure that you like and subscribe. That helps me out. Okay. And so closing out in this podcast, um, today's strategy snack. And if you're a new listener, every episode I drop a strategy snack, if that's the name of the podcast. That's should it should make sense. Like I, I come on. Like I, I drop strategy snacks. Uh, so <laughs> strategy snacks is a like a quick takeaway or quick gem. The main focus of episode. Um, something to really like harness and take away. Uh, find your tribe, step out of your comfort zone, and provide value to them. Again, I will repeat that strategy snack. Find your tribe. 
step out of your comfort zone and provide value to them. If you're solely joining groups um, or societies or communities of people to just promote and, and just sell, sell, sell without giving, without providing, without helping, without assisting, right? And you just want to take, 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 take from people. That's not an equal balance. Um, and you're not being much of a contributor to society. You're just trying to sell, 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 and take, take, take from people. Provide value to others. Provide a voice of reason. Provide assistance. If someone is looking for mentorship, if someone's looking for any kind of guidance, be there for them. Speak to people. That's how we progress and move forward, um, not only as creators and designers and business owners, but as people in general, right? Be there for other people. Like Provide value for others. Again, I will repeat that strategy snacks because it is very, very important. Again, shout out to Where Are the Black Designers. Um, I, that's been a great group so far and um, such really inclusive and helpful. And I just can't thank them enough. Um, find your tribe, step out of your comfort zone and provide value to them. I want to thank you guys for listening all the way through the strategy snacks. This is episode 10. I'm really, really happy um, we broke that milestone. I'm actually looking up right here um, how many podcasts get to episode 10. I don't know. Statistics. Uh, I don't remember. Okay, it should be somewhere here. But it's, it's a lot. There's a big fall off and big drop rate of podcasts that... Uh, ever gets episode 10. Another thing for all you guys, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. That helps me out. But in the back here on my whiteboard, I have a list of goals. One of the lists, one of the goals here, if you can check that out, zoom in um, if you're on YouTube. One of the goals says to reach episode 100, and that is my goal um, for this podcast. Whether we reach it next year and following year or if i start doubling up on episodes right like that is my goal i really want to help other people out um by providing insight and knowledge on technology and branding and uh user experience and how we can bridge that gap so that people can all around from both sides of the creativity um can begin learning about some of these topics and subjects so again thank you guys make sure to comment like and subscribe on apple youtube it helps me out um, and take care, guys. I appreciate it.